Hello everyone and welcome. Today I'm going to show you how to create a highly stylized caricature of Wolverine, taking him from a 2D concept all the way to a high definition 3D character. To get this done, we're going to use a powerful hybrid workflow that uses CC5's new actor mixer and the Blender Auto Setup Pipeline. We'll start right here in Real Illusions Character Creator 5 by loading an HD base. This is where we'll build our foundation. I'll be relying heavily on Actor Mixer to create an exaggerated base, which I'll send to Blender for additional sculpting adjustments and asset creation. Let's dive in. This wheel is composed of custom content that is still in production. A variation of this will be in the content store in the near future as of this recording. You'll notice there's a mixture of exaggerated wheel options. The goal of this step is to provide a jumping off point to create the subject character. I will manipulate the features further using Blender. Moving between these wheel points allows me to quickly shape the head and features. I want a decent amount of muscle in a prominent jaw and head shape. Now I'm going into the proportion editor to add a bit more exaggeration to the torso. You can also do this with the morphing tools, which allow you to lengthen, shorten, and adjust various points in the body through clicking and dragging. I've added some basic clothing from the presets, and now I'll send the character to Blender through the pipeline add-on, which will be in the plugins menu if you've installed it. Once he's loaded in Blender, I will start creating his signature hair. I'd recommend using the hair tool add-on or another dedicate hair add-on if you are not familiar with Blender's hair system. These add-ons are relatively inexpensive and allow for easier use of Blender's hair features. This tool allows me to draw out hair strands by holding D and then drawing out lines. Here I'm just adjusting the default material for visual purposes. I will create my own hair textures later. And I'm going to add a filter provided by the add-on to create symmetry and embed the hair root closer to the skull. Creating hair is relatively easy, but making it look good can take some experimentation and experience. Often you'd add a hair cap beneath the hair strands so that it looks a bit more realistic. This is not my area of expertise, so I'm just doing what I can for the purpose of this demo. I've entered into the sculpting mode and I'm making some adjustments to the face, mostly using the grab brush. I find adding detail is easier when you add other details first, like the hair. That's one of the reasons I started with the hair. After some adjustments and very light texturing around the face, I'm adding some chest hair to give him the classic rugged wolverine look. I'm going to create the basic shirt for him. There are presets in the CC5 library similar to the pants, but I'll just show you a quick way to do it. Everything related to 3D geometry can be built from a single vertex or primitive. So I just start with a plane and begin extracting. Then when you have enough geometry, you can shape it around the character. You shouldn't create double-sided cloth geometry. Rather, you should either cap off the holes or extrude the edges to create the illusion of thickness. create clothing folds, you can use the multi-resolution modifier and then do raw 3D sculpting and or use the cloth physics brush. You can also create your own cloth brush by duplicating a brush asset and assigning it various settings. In this case, I'm going to duplicate the draw brush, rename it cloth sculpt, and add a wrinkle alpha map that I imported earlier. From there, I will assign it an anchored stroke setting so that when I drag the cursor from its resting position, 
it will apply that alpha as a sculpted effect. I'm going to delete these pants and create my own to reinforce the process. I'll also show you a possible way to add texture details using a free texturing add-on called UCU Paint. By importing images and setting the projection coordinates to decal, you can place textures on the mesh strategically. With some trial and error, you can generate texture decals using various AI services, which can be valuable in the texturing process. Because UCU Paint has layering and blending functions, you can easily add details like denim fading using the blending in opacity settings. I will now add a multi-resolution modifier to the pants and do some light sculpting to add folding detail. You can use a combination of the sculpting brushes and the physics brushes to achieve this effect. Once you're finished high-res sculpting, you can transfer the details to a normal map by adding a multi-res normal map layer. You can then bake all of the maps, export them, and then remove the UCU paint material, which will transfer the texture setup to your existing material. I will now demonstrate how to transfer the clothing to the character rig so that they will be skin weighted and ready to export back to Character Creator 5. Once you've created and textured your asset, you can rig it to the character by selecting the asset, then the armature, and then type Control P to parent the clothing. Your clothing will now have vertex groups, which contain skinning information. To make things easier for myself, I lock the groups that I want to keep, then delete the rest. Then unlock those groups so I can apply a weight skinning influence. This particular step is optional. Now you can paint weight influences on the garment. This can take some practice and knowledge about how weights can influence clothing deformations. For many people, I'd recommend exporting the garment as an FBX asset, import it into Character Creator 5, then transfer the weights and use the CC5 weight skinning tools. The benefit is that you see how things deform more easily by applying animations. Hair is weighted in much the same way, though you will have to select the correct type of hair when you import it back into Character Creator. I would generally recommend that you export the hair as an FBX asset, import it into character creator, then transfer the weights as a hair item. This will ensure that the correct settings and data are applied. With my character ready, I'm going to send it back to CC with the Go CC button. This assumes that you're linked to the pipeline in CC5. Before I finish with the blender session, I'm gonna import the hair baking scene using the hair tool add-on. This will provide the textures I need for the CC hair shader. I can then just plug those textures and slots provided by the digital human hair shader material. I'm ready to adjust some of his expressions. Some of this can be done directly in Character Creator's Facial Profile Editor using the Soft Selection in Mesh Edit and then using Mirror Symmetry. For a character with an overly exaggerated face, sometimes dialing an expression past 100 and baking it will be viable. I notice that the tongue is too small for his mouth, so I will exit the editor and adjust it. 
You should auto position bones in the adjust bones menu after making a significant mesh change to the character. Back in the facial profile editor, I will go down the list and looking for any glaring issues and expressions. If necessary, I will try to make adjustments using the mesh edit function and sculpting tools. While symmetry cannot be used for moving vertices with the soft selection, you can mirror those changes and bake it as a symmetrical expression slider. Look for things like teeth poking through and adjust the surrounding area of the mouth or cheek. I'm now going to send the character back to Blender for a final high resolution sculpting pass, making sure to increase the resolution to sub D level 2. And I will use the Go Blender Morph function, which is perfect for this type of high resolution sculpting pass. The denser mesh allows for finer sculpting, allowing for increased muscular definition and sharper striations. When the sculpting is complete in Blender, the pipeline tool will send these changes back to Character Creator, not as a new base mesh, but as a morph slider. This means the newly sculpted high frequency detail is stored non-destructively and can be dialed in or blended with the original base, giving me precise control over the final look directly within the Character Creator interface. Finally, I'm going to revamp these claws I made. I'm also going to make them retractable using shape keys. To do this, I will create a claw in Blender, duplicate it three times, and create the illusion of retractability by using scaling. This scaling will be done per claw, and by using an aligned cursor position as my point of reference, and selecting normal as my transform direction. I'll also turn on proportional editing, and only have this impact the selected mesh. The shape keys will be named according to each claw's position on each hand. When this is done, the result can be exported as an FBX asset. After it's imported as a prop, you can transfer the skin weights. Also, you'll need to weight each claw to teach hand at 1.0 intensity which is 100%, otherwise the claws will deform with the fingers. Now we have a stylized, characterized Wolverine character with full animation capabilities, with retractable claws, ready for action. Let's recap the workflow. We used Character Creator 5 for its incredible speed in generating a custom, fully rigged character base with functional facial expressions. Then using the Blender Pipeline add-on, we transferred our character for a non-destructive finishing pass in Blender, where we handled all the high definition work. Hair grooming, HD sculpting, texture painting, and final asset modeling. As always, thanks for watching. Now go out and create something with these amazing tools.